Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man number 2. This is the sequel to the 2012 movie, The Amazing Spider-Man. And this movie features Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Jamie Foxx, Dane DeHaan, Felicia Jones, and Paul Giamatti, and Sally Field. Um, so, yeah. Before I actually start, considering this is a relatively new movie, it's actually only been, at the time I'm filming this, making this video has only been out for a day, um, maybe two, um, so yeah, so spoiler warning as usual, um, go check out the movie, depending on whenever, whenever the hell you're watching this video, um, you know, go catch it in theaters, or depending on when you're watching this video, you know, get it on DVD, Netflix, whatever the case may be, uh, and try to watch this, um, movie, um, so, cause this was a heavy movie, um, when it comes to the plot, so yeah, 10 seconds as usual, spoiler warnings starting now. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, okay, so 10 seconds as you, usual, um, have stopped, so. So yeah, so don't comment down in the comments below and be messaging me then be messaging me that never gave you a fair warning cuz I did I did that's how you get old. Um so yeah the amazing spider-man number two what I could give it okay so as usual quick synopsis likes and dislikes and then the rate so for the most so yeah the amazing spider-man number two basically revolves around um Peter Parker's Peter Parker spider-man um, basically trying to um, live his life after having graduated um, from high school. He, you know, he's trying to um, he's trying to um, fix his relationship with um, with Gwen Stacy. You know, after the death of her father, um, you know, he's trying to like have that kind of um, relationship that he's always wanted. Same time, he's also struggling with his um, families, uh, mostly you know why his parents left him. You know, and then you do have, you know, the villains going in all over the place, um, still in New York. So he's also dealing with that. Um, and most of the content, um, in this, um, movie, or at least more towards the, the end, I think I'm gonna, ha I'm, I would say, like, maybe the last hour of this movie, most of the content is right off, um, right off, um, the death of Gwen Stacy story arc. Um, so yeah, spoilers right there, the death, the death of Gwen Stacy, I mean, it's almost to a T. I mean, you know, most of the content is basically that, in my opinion. Um, so, so I mean, you do have Jane Fox as Electro, um, Dane DeHaan as Green Goblin, thrown in the mix, and then Paul Giamatti as Rhino. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're pretty um interesting villains. Um, each three of them in their own rights, but um. In my, in my opinion, the all three of them could have been, been improved. Um, I'm going to start off with Rhino Paul Giamatti's character. I mean, most people said he was in the movie for at least five minutes. I am actually beg to differ. Um, he's actually in the movie for a bit longer. I want to say around ten minutes. Um, it's just that the thing is that he's only seen in his Rhino suit for five minutes and then not seen in it for another five. So, I mean, he's actually a bit longer than most people say. But in the actual rhino suit, he's only really in it for five minutes. And it is kind of a letdown that he wasn't really used that much in the movie. I do feel he was a bit underused, but then again, going with this story arc and the way the movie kind of played out, I really don't see how they could have actually used them. So yeah, I mean, then you have um, Green Goblin, Dane Hahn, um, Harry Osborn. Um, Here's the problem with Harry Osborn and Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan, I know he's a great actor. I've seen Chronicle. He's a great. He's a great. He acts um very well in that movie. But here, he Harry Osborn kind of seems like a prick, like a little bitch to me, like a prick at the beginning when he's first introduced. Um, you know, I mean, he, his dialogue just sucks. You know, everything he's, he's saying just. It's retarded. It's dumb. And it's not really till up to the point he meets um he meets up with Peter Parker that he actually gets good. You know he's actually saying some decent lines. It's actually really acting and whatever. And, it, and it's fairly well for the most part up until the point where he actually turns into Green Goblin and 
it just goes all all downhill. It just goes to shit. Goes to shit. Um, his dialogue after he turns into Green Goblin just sucks. It's just terrible. Um, it's just terrible. Um, you have Jamie Fox as um Electro. Um, he's very likable and, and actually um from for the most part he's very likable at the start. I mean, you know, he um before he turns into Electro, you know, he's like this you know, that one guy that's really just misunderstood and, you know, just misjudged a lot and nobody really gives a cares for him. You know, he's just really misunderstood. And also, when he turns into Electro, you got to see that he's also been misunderstood and mistreated. But um, it wasn't really till the end. I think they kind of messed up with him too. Um, really, they messed up with all the villains in this movie, one way or another. Um, I think they tried to do the best job on Electro, but at the end, they just failed. Cause I mean, they tried to pack way too much action at the end. It just, just didn't work out for Electro's character. Um. The dialogue for the first, I mean the writing, the dialogue for maybe the first 20 minutes wasn't all that good. It was really questionable. It was just whatever. Um, the, the CGI for the most part was good, but there were, there was some CGI here that wasn't basically like for video games, you know, you know, for a second rate video game, you know, the CGI. I mean, it was every here and there that, that was unquestionable. Um, the love scenes between, um, between um, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, I mean, they kind of dragged on a bit too. I mean, so you know that 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 kind of bored me. Um, but the one thing I actually do have a major complaint about is that there's so many scenes in the trailers, um, so many scenes, and not many of those scenes actually made it into the final cut. I mean, there's many scenes. Um, for example, for example, two scenes that were very notable that that weren't in the movie. Um, there's this one scene where um, Harry Osborn is talking to his dad, he, and the dad says, Harry Osborn asks, you know, what about Spider-Man, and, and then his dad says, not everybody gets to live, or something like that, and that was cut from the movie. Then there's another scene that was with Harry Osborn, with Harry Osborn and Peter, where they're in, the, in this, like, one room, and Harry says um, that... Oscorp has been following him and following Peter Parker. And Peter's like, why? And then Harry's like, isn't that the question of the day? You know, that was cut from the scene. And there's also the one teaser that Felicia Jones, who played Felicia, uh, there's a teaser. People speculate, speculated she may be Black Cat or something like that. That was also cut from the movie. So, yeah, there were many scenes here that were cut from the movie, which kind of pissed me off um, and does, you know, bring the rate down. Now it does sound like I'm hating this movie, but you know there are few things to like about it. I mean, for Star Wars, the action scenes, the action scenes for the most part were well done. They were good. Um, the character development, especially for Peter Parker, was very well done. Um, I mean, even though the love scenes with um, Gwen Stacy kind of did drag on a bit, you know, I still think they were well done for the most part. And you know, you do feel the love, you do feel the chemistry. And I think one one of the biggest sh shockers um, for moviegoers and non comic book fans is the actual death of Gwen Stacy. The way they did it, I mean, I already knew they were gonna do it, um, but you know, for those who didn't actually understand that much of the comics or just the uh, Spider Man overall, you know, there is that kind of shock shock factor. So. You, you do have that. Um, I mean, the the acting from everybody, um, for the most part, was well done. I mean, um, Dane DeHaan was was kind of questionable at times. Um, same thing with Paul Giamatti, but everybody else was kind of was good for the most part. Um, you do have the fact also the other um like almost like the subplot of Peter Parker wanting to know what happened to his parents. Um, that was kind of interesting to see, but I think that was a plot point that could have been extended a bit more, maybe even un up until the third movie, but it's just really quickly resolved about halfway into this movie, which I really didn't like, but, you know, whatever. Um, 
this movie is questionable at times. No, it's not the best movie. It's not the worst movie. Um, it's not the best Spider-Man movie we've had. Um, I, you know, I think the best Spider-Man Spider-Man movie we've had is the second one from the original trilogy. You know, with Sam Raimi, um, Spider-Man Two. You know, with Doctor Octopus. Um, this one I'd have to put it on par, on par with maybe the first Spider-Man one from the Sam Raimi trilogy. Um. I actually do have to think. I, I would have to say that the the first one from this series may be a bit better. I mean, the problem also is with this movie. Is it it's a it's really long. It's two hours and twenty minutes, so you know it is very long. And there's many things they could have done in those two hours twenty minutes. But for the most part, um, for the most part, it was just the love scenes between Gwen Stacy and and Peter Parker. And you know, after a while, it just drags on. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, another thing I would like I have to say is that the pacing at the end, I want to say between the last 20 minutes of the movie, um, do, it kind of does differ from the rest of the movie, because in, during the pacing from, like, the, for the first two hours, um, was kind of, you know, kind of comedic, fast paced, um, well, medium paced actually, you know, sometimes fast, but for the most part medium, but then, Last twenty minutes is just action scenes, you know, very fast paced, and it, it differs. And it, the translate transition from medium pace to fast pace doesn't really sit well with sit well with me. So you no, know, yeah, I mean, there are things to like about this movie, yet there are things to hate about it. Um, so it's not the best movie. It's not the worst movie. Um. So yeah, I mean, then you also have the fact you have the end credit scene with it, which is X Men. I mean, I mean the fact that they're doing an end credit scene with X Men. I mean, I, at first I thought that was gonna be complete BS. I mean, I knew they were gonna put an actual X Men scene there. I mean, the scene that I thought was just gonna be complete BS, but the X Men scene was actually very decent. It was actually pretty cool. And you really didn't see it in any of the trailers. I mean, maybe two seconds of it, but besides that, you no, know, it's pretty new, pretty cool, and pretty refreshing. Um, so, yeah, re refreshing. So, I mean, yeah, that's really all I've got to say about this movie. I mean, except for the rate on a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, and six being decent. Originally, or yeah, originally, I was gonna give this a seven point seven five out of ten, but you know, after having talked about it and thought it, thought thought of it thought of it a bit more a while longer I I'd have to change my score and give it a 7.25 out of 10 so 7.25 out of 10 7.25 you know 7.25 out of 10 I mean has its problems yet it's fairly decent I mean so yeah I mean that's that's my thought on amazing spider-man number three um yeah, that's my thoughts on Amazing Spider-Man number three. So yeah, remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, I do movie reviews, comic, comic book reviews, and TV show reviews. So definitely stay tuned for those. Besides that, comment down below on your thoughts on Amazing on Amazing Spider-Man number two. You know, what are your thoughts on it? You know, did you like it? Did you hate it? And which one do you like more, Amazing Spider-Man number number one or Amazing Spider-Man number two? And which is your favorite Spider-Man movie overall? Comment all that down below. And besides that, don't forget to like this video, um, share it on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.